This short video will discuss infectious diseases within the archaeological record. Contagious and infectious disease have caused misery, suffering and death throughout the human past. Across the world, epidemics and pandemics have created social, political and economic upheaval and even influenced the collapse of societies. The historical record gives detail of such events, the horrendous ordeals people endured and also provides an important context for archaeological discoveries and investigations. The archaeological record shows the physical evidence of known and unknown epidemic events, and through human, animal and environmental remains has contributed to medical science by providing an understanding of disease formations, conditions and cures. Bioarchaeology is a new discipline which specialises in the health and living conditions of past societies, using techniques such as bacterial DNA, genetic and skeletal analysis to help identify specific diseases. Combined, history and archaeology have provided important information regarding how various diseases spread and what different societies did to treat and combat epidemics. A virulent infectious disease did not appear to be largely problematic for prehistoric hunter-gatherer societies because pathogens were ineffective in spreading amongst small dispersed groups. People would have had to contend far more with diseases associated with parasites and bacterial infections caused through diet, injury and contact with wild animals. The shift to agrarian life started around 10,000 years ago with farming and the domestication of animals which led to the development of settlement and urbanisation over time. The combination of increased population and density and the decline of sanitation, hygiene and nutrition created the perfect environment for pathogen transmission and for diseases to evolve such as cholera, influenza, leprosy, tuberculosis and smallpox. As communities and societies became more connected through trade and expansionism, territories would have experienced epidemics turning into pandemics as they cross regions. One of the earliest known archaeological examples was discovered in northeast China, consisting of a site with 29 houses dating to 5,000 years ago. Found inside one of the houses were the remains of 100 individuals, children and adults, which had been placed inside one at a time. The house was burnt down and the site abandoned, never to be reoccupied. Archaeologists at first believed this was the result of a conflict, but later attributed the event to an infectious disease carried by local voles. This has led to the re-evaluation of contemporary inhumations discovered throughout the area, which appeared to have been buried hastily with no items, and suggesting that an epidemic had impacted the region. The earliest historical references to describe diseases such as malaria, bubonic plague, smallpox and tuberculosis appear in ancient Egypt. From 2000 BCE, the historical record shows that periodic outbreaks and pandemics inflicted this ancient society. During the 18th dynasty of Amenhotep III, the palace was relocated to an isolated location in Thebes, which is believed to be the first known mitigated strategy against an infectious disease in history. Ancient texts describe remedies and cures with ingredients such as honey, sam's plant and chamomile to combat diseases and the religious response with the ordering of Sekhmet statues to be built to ward off the infections. These also appear in the archaeological record and evidence again of fresh burials throughout different periods. It is difficult for archaeologists to detect diseases as many leave no trace even on well-preserved bodies, but diseases on preserved mummies from ancient Egypt have been detected. Pustules on remains such as Ramses V indicate that he may have died of smallpox and demonstrates that infectious disease was a concern for all levels within ancient society. During excavations in Athens in 1994, archaeologists uncovered a pit containing the remains of up to 150 adults and children with little burial items. They had been buried in a hurry, stacked up one on top of the other, and date to an event known as the Plague of Athens. In 430 BCE, during the Peloponnesian War, Athens was being defended against Sparta and was relying on its maritime connections for supplies. The city, experiencing an influx of refugees, poor hygiene and lack of resource, was already a breeding ground for infectious disease when it was hit by a pandemic that had originated in Ethiopia. An eyewitness account by Greek historian Theocydides 
describes how the inhabitants suffered from symptoms such as fever, inflammation in the eyes, sore throats leading to bleeding, vomiting, pustules and ulcers on the body, extreme thirst and diarrhoea. Physicians, ignorant to the disease, quickly became ill and also died, as mass hysteria took hold of the city's population. According to Theocydides, people became indifferent to the law and religion, as people felt abandoned by their rulers and gods. It is estimated that 25% of the population died from various diseases that spread throughout the city, and scientific analysis of teeth from the burial pits showed that these victims had died of typhus. The social and political impact for Athens was significant, as the lower classes inherited position, wealth and property as their elite relatives died. The pandemic influenced the city's defeat to Sparta and took a heavy toll on its economy, resulting in the demise of Athens as a major power within the Mediterranean. The discovery and investigation of examples such as these in the archaeological record help provide a chronology of past epidemics and understand the evolution of infectious disease. Archaeology and history shows that infectious disease have unfortunately always been part of the human experience, but also demonstrates that although vulnerable, humans are remarkably resilient. Thank you for watching this video by Simple Archaeology. Please hit like and subscribe for future archaeological videos.